Hey everybody, I'm the Fred Krieger Memorial Lump Band. <laughs> it's all happening! <laughs> um, I'm going to read you this poem I wrote called Harvest, because I'm really creative with titles. And uh, I kind of wanted to dedicate it to someone, but then I thought, like, the subject matter, that's actually really fucked up. So what I'm going to just do is, like, ask everybody, okay, see how who the first person can be, who's going to be first to raise his or her hands after I say the word cat. And that person will, well, not that time, but that, <laughs> but that person will get this poem dedicated to his or her cat. In this story, this yes. thank you, thank you. you hate your cat, Corbin. It's not my cat. His cat's name is Bagheera, so the not my cat. Sucks. So begrudgingly, I dedicate this poem to Bagheera. I'm sorry he couldn't be here with us tonight. <laughs> Maybe he can Skype in next time. Um, okay, so I just wrote this, and I've never written a poem this long, and so I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I was kind of thinking of it in the sense that it would. Someone should illustrate it. At, Edward Gorey should illustrate this from beyond the grave, basically. So if any of you want to do that and be Edward Gorey, that would be great. Ne Necromancy. Uh, so it's called Harvest. <laughs> so we begin, black vans roll in, doors open, we pour out. Over radio, they've told us what this grizzly seems about. Seems the teenage girl was sick of the world and didn't see how she could mend it, so it entered her brain she should seek out a train, lay her life on the rails, and just end it. Now her torso is gone, her bits litter the fields, but her ivory legs and their fishnets and heels kick up at the sky where a low thunder stirs, like the witch of the east? Yeah, the witch of the east with no house over her. Somewhere death is dressed up like snidely whiplash, laughing maniacally, twirling his outre mustache. Cops mill around the wreckage of the train as it burns. I've come because it belongs to life tech, our corporate genomics concern. We set to work, our foreman yells that there's no time for pity. We've got to get these coolers to hospitals in the city. See, the train had snaked off, coiled like the quaff of some colossal gorgon, disgorged its gore and lost its store of lab-grown human organs. Here a kidney, thrown for meters, bursting like a wet cheroot. God, it's stultifying, steaming in these biohazard suits. I hope memory won't serve, because I think it deserves a less afflicted master. I turn like the plowman in Bruegel's painting quite casually from disaster. It is quite a sight, that long and smoldering ruin of smoking cars, but my eyes can't leave her thighs, they are laced with faded scars. What was she before most of her bought that ultimate ticket to ride? An honor student, a burnout, would she have been somebody's bride? I think how beautiful she'd be if she had all the parts she's missing. A milk-white breast, a laughing throat, the lips I would be kissing. If the heavens are aligned, maybe up there she's resurrected, unless her soul followed suit with her corpus and was violently bisected. The foreman barks that we should all respect life tech's investment, treat these things as sacrosanct for escapes they represent. Escape from drink or age or alcohol or slow diseases, torture. That's why the company sent a sifting pseudo-human orger. In all this mess of twisted steel and guts we're trying to save, you'd think we'd have enough parts to snatch just one girl from the grave. Right? <laughs> Ole. That's what I always think. Like when little Kurt was diagnosed, it gave even me such a scare. Three-year-olds look so alien when the chemo steals their hair. She and I would stay up drinking cup after cup of black coffee to sharpen our senses. But we'd grown so numb, sleep would simply not come no matter how many sheep jumped their fences. How strange Kurt wouldn't be around to laugh and run and play if they'd not removed his thyroid and replaced it right away with some cultured cells themselves like cancers growing in a vat. They popped in that clone matter. He got better. That was that. But some take this all too far and science supplies for demand. You can't be young forever. That's the best... Yes, that's not a word. That's abyss cannot be spanned with bridges of flesh, bluest eyes, swiftest feet. We mold the people as well as the city, the soft version of concrete. When it comes to all this dead life, maybe I agree with her. When fixing oneself, must one consider what is de rigueur? As if replacement culture were dictated from above. Oh, you burned your hands? We'll get you new ones. Don't bother buying gloves. It's like I tell my buddies, and it's like I tell the wife. These days, no one fears the reaper because no body values life. We all just believe we're born, the fish can fly, or amps go to 11. But fish are for the sea, my friend, and when you die, there is no heaven. So her weird, sweet resurrection I would gladly play a part in if we could even find her head or just a hole to plug this heart in. <laughs> the foreman freezes, horror-struck, as if he tripped a bomb. The girl's cell vibrates in the glass. This glass? 
The foreman freezes horror struck as if he tripped a bomb. The girl's cell vibrates in the grass. The screen is flashing mom. Jesus, he says, don't touch it. I'll go and tell the cops. It seems to me an eternity before that buzzing stops. New voicemail. What's the message? I love you, call me back. Don't forget you owe me money. I know things are tough right now, but they'll get better, honey. An officer snaps photos of surrounding weeds and slag. Rubber gloved fingers lift unzip and the phone goes in a bag. I plot on like Orpheus, say I won't, but look back where Eurydice's gams dance off the railroad track. They've covered her body, what's left with the sheet. Their timing is flawless, rain bursts through the heat. The foreman rounds his chattel, we've harvested enough. I don't mind rain, so I complain, but the foreman tells me tough. I've had enough, I need a piss, and I could eat a horse. Nobody wants a liver, that's all gooped in mud and gorse. So it's held off, they file away to satisfy their cravings. My head stays down to scan the ground, because some are still worth saving. Thank you. Yeah.